Hello again, dear friends, and welcome back to Sankofa, which is taking off from Paris after an emergency landing where we successfully explained to Didier Rickner that his ignorance about the sacred object stolen in Africa is terrifying for a so-called expert. I asked him to imagine that I entered the St. Eustache Church in Paris, stole the cross of Jesus and took it to be displayed in a museum in Bagamoyo, Tanzania. I would then tell my Tanzanian museum lovers that it's a piece of indigenous European art. Then I ask Mr. Rickner what would happen to me if I refuse to return the cross to France because my fellow Africans were getting so attached to this European art piece. As expected, the guy was annoyed about displaying a cross in a museum and he finally did admit that exhibiting a spiritual system that belonged to another culture in Kebranli Museum is offending from an African perspective. He insisted that I should stay for lunch, but I had to decline because I really need to finish for you my recount of my presidential lunch. African History Daily by my daddy So back to our discussion on the thorny problem of restitution. The President Talon reminded me that the initial request from African states dated back to the 1960s. He recalled with emotion the famous speech given by the former DRC President, President Mobutu, to the United Nations in 1973 which forced Belgium to return a few dozen stolen objects back to the DRC and Rwanda. My personal favorite return was the famous Venus of Cyrene that Italy finally consented to return to Libya in 2008 as a sign of colonial reparation. Obviously, these returns are very isolated, symbolizing the failure and lack of a well-coordinated strategy by African countries. To relinquish themselves from these requests, successive French authorities relied on a French law dating from 1566. This law, called the Edict of Moulin, prohibits kings and presidents from disposing public property. Okay, hold on one minute. This law already existed before Napoleon stole his European neighbor's art. Yet, it did not prevent the restitution back to the owners. This looks like a differentiated application of the same law depending on who is requesting for the property. Well, I guess the African gods were tired to be waiting in the Quai Museum in France because they probably inspired the announcement by Emmanuel Macron, the French president, at the University of Ouagadougou on November 28, 2017, where he committed that in five years, all conditions should have been put together for temporary or definitive return of the African objects. He commissioned immediately, in March 2018, a report by two academic experts, Benedict Savoy from France and Felwin Saar from Senegal. These two experts submitted 232 fascinating pages of piecing together reflection on colonization and shed a new light on the circumstances of this misappropriation and the specificity of African heritage. President Macron went even further by deciding to return immediately 26 sacred objects to Benin. Jubilation, shout of joy in Benin, and then a long silence from the government, followed by a... <laughs> like the sound of Benin deflating, to express its inability to receive these pieces before 2022. So it is taken three years to receive only 26 objects. I wonder how long it's going to take to welcome the almost 6,000 objects exiled in France. In short, it is really sad to make Africans look like incapable fools and waste this unique window of opportunity. It's also quite frightening to realize that in fact, the worst enemy of the return of these objects might not be Didier Rickner and his art lovers, but rather the African state themselves. My African cliché of the day is a visa. Let's call this the Kebranli Museum Visa. This is the visa that 
President Macron will soon put in place to facilitate school trips for children from villages in Benin to Paris so that they can finally see for themselves the statuettes like Kondo the shark symbolizing King Behanzen and all the other spiritual system stolen from their country. The Parisian museums of Quai and Orangerie, strategically of course, will be able to sponsor air ticket for those children with the proceeds of their current joint exhibition titled Félix Fénéon and the Art from Far Away, which is exhibiting currently so many stolen pieces in Paris. And while waiting for President Macron to put this new visa in place, I dare to suggest three quick actions to President Talon. First, popularize the proven influence of the so-called African primitive art on Pablo Picasso and his cubism on the Dadaist, in short, on modern European art. Secondly, invest in culture in schools universities and on every sidewalk because right now if you ask about their african heritage there is a fair number of young africans who may ask you if this is on netflix and finally ask for the declassification and digitalization of all the archives of the french colonial administrations so guys what do you think the president responded to this well i am not able to tell you that because in fact that lunch was purely fictional What is not fictional is the very supportive messages I received from you guys, specifically from Sarah in Kampala and from Tanya from <laughs> Instagram, who kindly agreed that I can use her photos from the Kebranli Museum to illustrate this episode. I look forward to boarding you again next Monday on the Sankofa flight. Thank you and goodbye.